This video is not intended to encourage or glorify any kind of drug use. The sole purpose of these videos is to educate you on the dangers of what these substances can do to you. Please do not do any of the acts mentioned in this video. I repeat, do not do any of the acts mentioned in this video. Thank you everyone for the continued support. If you have yet to sign my petition to get my main channel back, Tales from the Trip, please do so. I will leave it in the description box below. It already has over 6,000 signatures, which I'm eternally grateful for. Thank you all so much, and let's just get to the video. Days prior to the experience, I had not consumed any psychoactive substances. On the day of the experience, I met up with my mates for band practice. I was tired and not really feeling it, so I decided to snort a bit of the substance labeled as 2FA that I just received in the mail. I had done 2FA plenty of times in the past, and it would always provide me with clear mental stimulation and energy. I opened the sealed 2FA baggie, weighed out around 20 milligrams my .001 gram scale, and proceeded to snort it without giving it much thought. Immediately, I noticed that it felt and tasted really weird. It was very fine and fluffy, didn't burn like the 2FA I was used to, and the bitter taste had a disgusting tang that almost made me want to throw up. Eventually, I was expecting some slight stimulation to set in, but instead, I started feeling stoned. Not just multiple joints stoned, but as if a whole tray of really strong edibles was kicking in. It was at this point that I realized something was really wrong. I ran to the bathroom and looked in the mirror. My eyes looked watery and red. My pupils were normal sized. Shit, this is not 2FA. It's not even a stimulant. It's a fucking cannabinoid, I thought to myself. Immediately, I started rinsing out my nose, hoping that most of it had not been absorbed yet. I went back to our practice room and sat down, hoping that the high would wear off quickly. It wasn't even a pleasant, funny kind of high. It just made me feel dumb at this point. Later, it had not gotten any better. Instead, it had gotten worse. At this point, I was feeling a weird tingling sensation all over my body and started feeling really sick. I proceeded to go to our fridge to grab a drink to maybe combat the dry mouth and nausea a bit. As I stood up, I felt like I was about to fall over. While walking, I experienced this really stroboscopic effect as if I was playing a video game with very few frames per second and reduced depth perception, almost walking to the fridge. As I turned around to make my way back to the seating area, I got really confused because I had trouble recognizing where I was, feeling like a little kid who had just lost sight of his mother while on vacation in a strange city. A horrible sense of dread set in that would last throughout the whole experience. On the way back, I suddenly stopped walking as the tingling sensation in my body started shifting towards my stomach, creating a sensation like a bunch of ropes pressing on it from the outside. I think I gotta puke, I mumbled, and one of my bandmates helped me get to the bathroom. The next thing I remember is sitting down on the bathroom floor next to a puddle of my own vomit while my bandmate frantically looked for something, probably cleaning supplies. From this point on, my memory of the incident is patchy. My bandmate drove me home. At home, I tried to eat something, but threw it up immediately. Next memory, I woke up. It was dark. I periodically felt a painful tingling sensation in my chest. I realized that I was breathing, and the pain coincided with that. It hurt to breathe. I couldn't think of anything to do about it. In fact, I could barely think at all, and drifted back to sleep. Later, I woke up again. It was still dark, but there was a picture with something emitting light. I realized that it was not a picture, but the object emitting light was a lamp and it was standing on my nightstand. It all looked like a picture because I had no depth perception. There was tingling and pressure in my lower body, which reminded me of the fact that I had a body. I realized that I was lying in bed and that this feeling was the urge to pee. 
It took me what felt like an eternity until I figured out how to use my legs and stand up. After going in a circle for a while and getting confused every time my perspective shifted, I realized that I probably needed to open my bedroom door to get to a place where I could pee. The way to my bathroom seemed like an endless dark tunnel leading to a single point of light. Nothing good outside of this tunnel existed. Out of the pitch black darkness on the side of the tunnel, I heard the faint whispering of multiple voices. If I had any emotional capacity left, I would probably be afraid of them, but the only emotion I was capable of feeling at this point was pure existential dread. I blacked out and came to again a while later, looking at a picture of a piece of furniture. I heard a voice calling out. I realized that I was staring at my nightstand, and the voice was my grandma calling my name. The existential dread I was feeling made me realize that something was horribly wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Why would I feel like this, and where was my grandma? I looked around. Where was I? I faintly remembered that I lived here. I... Who was I? Was I really me? I felt so disconnected from everything, including myself, that nothing seemed real. My grandma called again, apparently from my kitchen. There were other faint voices coming from it. Was she talking to someone? Who else was here? I went to the kitchen and opened the door. Nobody was in there. Then, it hit me like a brick. I lived alone. My grandma never was here. In fact, she had died several years ago. I realized that I must have lost my mind. My thoughts caught up with the constant existential dread I was feeling. I started remembering that I had ingested a substance. How long ago was it? Looking at my clock, I had trouble deciphering it. Exhausted from the mental strain that trying to read a clock put on me, I went back to sleep. Waking up again, it was bright day outside. I still felt so horrible, so dysphoric, as if I would never be able to experience happiness again. My brain was all foggy and I still couldn't think straight. I turned on my computer in an attempt to distract me from my current state. It took me forever to remember my password. I tried playing some StarCraft, a game I was really good at, to try and have some fun. I did not have any fun. I was too dumb to play it. That's it. You've broken your brain. You are mentally disabled now. This is what it feels like to have severe brain damage, I thought to myself. I started sobbing. The whole rest of the day is only a blur. The next day I felt a little bit better, still foggy and prone to mental exhaustion, but not as bad as the day before. Over the next few days, the fogginess and mind-numbingly dysphoric feeling went away, leaving me with some recurring periods of derealization that would take months to fully subside. After looking through the assortment of the vendor I ordered from, I realized that the mislabeled substance ingested must have been THJ-018 since it was the only cannabinoid they sold. Aside from that, they only had stimulants and pathogens and psychedelics. Before this experience, I naively assumed that this research chemical vendor, which had a good reputation, could be trusted. But the harsh reality is, none of them should be trusted when it comes to your health. Take my nightmarish experience as a tale of caution. Never ingest anything if you're not absolutely certain what it is. Always check the identity of your drugs with a test reagent. I found it odd there wasn't a vault for this chemical. That should have been my first clue about this stuff. It was so cheap though, I couldn't resist. A lot of people on the internet were saying it was weak and not to do it, so I thought it wasn't going to be a big deal. I couldn't find anything really about IV dosing, so I decided to try that when the intranasal thing wasn't doing it for me. It gave me a rush. I was surprised. I was wired and feeling really good, so I did more. A lot more. In less than two days, even with sleep, I developed psychosis. I have a lot of experience with stimulants and have tried over 60 types of drugs and research chemicals with only one psychotic episode, did coke every day for a year, and took three or four fentamine tablets that night. 
I started seeing people, mostly police officers, outside my windows. At the time, I was selling drugs and had just sold some to a friend of a friend. I started thinking that I sold to a narc and I was in deep shit. I've never been so paranoid in my life. There were cops everywhere. Then a special forces team came in at night and put their guns to my head. There were a lot of auditory hallucinations such as police radios and people, sometimes people I knew, talking to me very clearly. It was all very real and vivid. I think this stuff may cause brain damage. At the moment, I've been experiencing extreme short-term memory loss and balance loss. It has affected my speech as well, with sentences coming out jumbled or not making any sense at all. There's a lot more that happened, but it is very difficult to write at the moment. In short, MDPV is incredibly addictive for me and caused horrible side effects at high doses. I've done pretty much every drug in the book, but nothing fucked me up quicker than MDPV. I am a 20-year-old male. I use Spice, Magic Gold, K2, Happy Shaman, and all the legal highs that were available in Oceanside, California. I'm a military service member, and I'm well aware we are not supposed to use drugs, but me and my friends chose to anyway. I use Spice regularly from June until October 2009, when I deployed to Iraq with no ill effects. I seized usage while in Iraq and continued when I returned stateside. I absolutely love Spice and never had a problem until one horrible night. I got a terrible case of tinnitus. I could physically feel my heartbeat on the side of my head and the blood vessels next to my ear. I temporarily went deaf and couldn't hear my friends speak or myself and had a persistent, very loud roaring noise which felt like my brains were going to spew out of my ears. My heart felt like it was at heart attack levels. All I could do was lay in my bed and pray to God not to take me now. I had extreme anxiety, which I've never had on any drug. Shrooms, acid, pot, MCPP, Adderall, ecstasy, and the list goes on. This experience was the worst experience I have ever endured. It lasted about two hours, I would assume. After the effects wore off, I just thought I got way too high. Yes, that happened for once, and induced myself into a panic attack. This same experience happened one or two more times, which led to my decision of being drug-free, aside from shrooms occasionally. I am incredibly paranoid of smoking marijuana now because I get uncontrollable paranoia, what I would compare to schizophrenia. I have been clean from spice and all drugs, including alcohol, for about four months with no physical or mental impairment. I know it was a very foolish choice I made to ingest chemicals that are unresearched. I don't trust research stuff, much less chemicals from a strange country. There is no way to know the purity or dosage, but I'm here to share my experience with anyone that may be considering using or is currently. Stop now before you have this happen to you. I know you guys want to think it was just me or my genetic build, but don't take the risk with something you don't know anything about. I thought I knew it all. Thankfully, I'm still here to share. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me from myself. God bless, my friends. Be smart out there.